Welcome back to the Racing Roundup Show. I'm Jim Trader, hanging out at Greenfield Gallery in McGuanago, where you can find some pretty cool items. I found the guy who helps run the place. He and his dad, Ralph Cena and Ralph Hibbert Jr., are here as part of the program. Let's all give him a big welcome and a thank you for having us here today. Ralph, thanks for letting us be uh, part of the car show. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out. I think this is the fourth time we've done this. We've won the weather lottery every year, so <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you to everyone else that came. I've known you for a long time. Your father-in-law helped create this program 40 years ago. Yes. And we get the benefit of just hanging out with a bunch of racers all the time. And you have it deep, deep inside of you that uh, you love racing. Your wife obviously was born into it. She couldn't help it. Right. But the reality is you are still involved in a big way, making people relive memories and find new memories with, with great stuff you guys get to collect and, and sell and buy. Absolutely. Um, for the last probably 25 years, we've dealt in, I've never had any desire to race, but I've loved watching it, loved, <laughs> you know, just... It, dirt pavement road racing it doesn't it doesn't matter I like I kind of like it all so you know in the late 80s early 90s I started making racing collectibles and I'm like wow so you can actually have die casts and stuff you watch on TV and race and stuff like that um, and then uh, uh, towards the middle of uh, well about 2000 2001 we bought all of our McCrieger's negatives and that was capturing pieces of history and since the past we've we bought Al Fortner's negatives, Mike Dunn's negatives, Mike Naparella's, and a bunch of other collections to kind of keep, you know, some of the history of racing. Like, you know, we've donated a bunch of stuff to Badger, um, uh, helped out Bill Bloomer on some of the history of Badger. Uh, Badger Midgets, yep. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, and I love the Indy 500. Um, two, two milestones. My first race that I went to was 1980 Badgerland 150. 150. Uh, it rained all day. Was that the first ASA race at the Milwaukee Mile? Or close uh, to no, it, it was close. It, it was second or third. Yep. But it was during fair week, and it rained, and I'm like, oh, it's not going to get in. And they just decided. So we misqualified, but they decided to start 53 cars. <laughs> and Mark Martin won, and it was absolutely amazing. I was, I was hooked then. So then I got good grades my freshman year in high school, and my dad bought Indy 500 tickets. So we went. the first year I went to the Indy 500 was 85. So the first year I got to see the spin and win. So, Danny Sullivan, Mario Andretti. Absolutely, yes. how cool, you know, so I was hooked there. Um, very fortunate right now, my oldest son lives in Indianapolis, so we road trip four or five times a year, catch some racing, you know, we're also big bowling, so we do yeah. that as well, but, you know, it certainly saves a lot of money being able to stay with somebody there rather than uh, having to sleep on the floor like we did with Daryl. Yeah, seven deep or eight deep in room. I was under the desk. At one point. That was my dark yeah, spot. Yeah. Under the desk in the suite he got for us to hang out in Indy. Daryl Dobbs, the co-creator of the show, was at one time the executive director of the American Bowling Congress, overseeing three million members at Weekly Bowl or Bowl and Leagues. Uh, that has now moved on to Texas, and Daryl's no longer with us. But that passion lives on. And I want people to see. I, uh, we talk about all the stuff you guys get coming and going. I want you to do a little show and tell here. Sure. That's what they call the TV business, show and tell. What kind of things do you have in stock right now that people can come to Greenfield Gallery or look up on Facebook or, so, or uh, social media or on your website to find out what you have in stock right now? Our, our eBay user handle is Greenfield Gallery Sales 2. Okay. The number and, two. Yep, number two. And we have 1,700 items on. Um, the Christine Sobeck, her son races in Badger. She helps me list a lot of items. Yeah. We have a ton of racing programs, a ton of photos, lots and lots of die cast. That's a lot of the stuff that we have on, on a regular basis. Um, I brought some kind of cool stuff that I've picked up over the years. All right, show it off. Uh, the baby. first one is if Ty Majeski, if anybody knows, I actually have a door of Ty Majeski. You like Ty Majeski. Yeah, and I have every regular car that he's ever produced. I have it signed. Um, so Kevin Owen up in lacrosse does customs. So he's like, I have an extra of the Snowball Derby one, and I have a custom car, and Ty signed it this year at the uh, – at the Midwest Tour opener at Slinger. So this so is one of one. It's one of one. Diecast yes. made for Ty Majeski's first of two Snowball Championship right. winning cars. Absolutely. That's right there. Yeah. And you can sell it. You're, it's available no, to buy. It's right. not. I'm going to move this over to me. Not. I'm going to stack the toys in front of me like it's <laughs> so, Christmas, but I don't. I want, you can buy them. So, I'm not going to buy any of these. So, th and this is another one. And again, this is out of my collection. So, you know, we buy and sell all the time. Yep. But part of this is you collect and you want some. My uncle stood in line for. I don't know, a ridiculous amount of hours when Alan Kowicki was at Greenfield High School, that legendary day, yep. and he stood in line. And at that time in 1992, 93, there wasn't as many. The diecast was just starting out. It wasn't as prevalent. So my uncle got uh, an autographed Alan Kowicki car. That so, is autographed by Alan Kowicki on Alan yeah. Kowicki Day, March of 1993, just weeks before he passed away. But after he was a champion, came back to celebrate with a bunch of fans. 7,000-plus showed up and 
The open it's Saturday, Saturday, Saturday for everyone. Awesome. Yeah. The guy's right on top of the roof on the seventh. Come on up and get it. So another thing that I mean, you I, gotta buy it. Sorry. So I was at the race last year. I was really excited that the Craftsman trucks came. Yeah. That the Arca came. And Josh Balicki had a ride. Yep. So I picked up a couple Josh Balicki diecasts. This is a back to blue, the wounded blue.org. And I got Josh to sign it on in the pits um, last year at the at the race. I like to when I buy and sell and collect at Matt Kenseth, Alan Kowicki, Josh Balicki, you know, even Mark Martin, some of the ASA guys, those guys all sell. You know, they, there's a connection in Wisconsin that those guys all have. I mean, everyone kind of watched Matt growing up for his years in racing at Slinger, Madison, Jefferson, the Dells, etc. So those all have a little bit better, you know, sell better and have more interest from fans. Greenfield Gallery sales, too, on eBay. Go to the eBay store. Ralph's got a whole lot more stories to tell you in person as well. We're hanging out at the Greenfield Gallery with Ralph here. We want to go give him a look, give a call. We've got a lot of stuff he's got here, buying and selling racing collections at Greenfield Gallery. We'll be right back on the Racing Roundup Show. Organized like the pros with Hefner.